Iroblast, Red Elemental Blast. Maybe the, the Last Force Will. All options. I think oh, he does see... have the Last Force Will on his side. Okay. Yeah, I think we're just going to see a lot more of the same. Uh, I think Videlli Clicks will be on both sides, and that's the that's the biggest thing. Pretty much just going to be a... Uh, on the draw, try and actually land the... Uh, Yeah, they're just, they're just trying to play land after land. Yeah. And uh, Kurt Spice is going to be a little more aggressive. He's got Stoneforge and Mystic. He's got Vendillion Click. Oh yeah, I was looking at the wrong list. I was going to say, oh, okay, so yeah, John on the on the draw is is he's going to want to try and definitely, <laughs> there we go. Uh, is definitely going to want to try and you know uh, get that standstill out there, but it's going to be a lot more difficult on the draw with especially with uh, him having uh, with Kurt having the the Spellstutter sprites and access to the uh, that on turn two. Yeah, the uh, Stancil is a really inter interesting card, especially because they both have man lands, they both have wastelands. Yep. So John Winters could play a Stancil and feel all right about it, but it might end up not going in his favor. Now he does have a little more of the man land front. He's got three, four Mistress Factories, he's got a Celestial Colonnade for a little, yeah. little extra mm -hmm. man land power. But still, I mean, you know, you get your land wasted, they play Mistress Factory, and you could be yeah. having to break the Stancil yourself, which is always just the worst feeling. Yeah, that's that's suboptimal. Um, Drew, Drew Levin asks, not here today, uh, asks, is he on uh, Tim Scousey's approximate list uh, for the fairy deck? Sprite Million Mystic, Light Countersuite, and Ancestral Vision. I'll just run through the deck real fast of a Wesson Kurt Spaces deck for Drew Levin and all you people at home wondering. Uh, four Mystic, four Vendelian Click, three Spell Stutter Sprite, four Jace the Mind Sculptor, four Ancestral Vision. Four Brainstorm, four Swords, three Force of Will, one Batter Skull, one Sword of Feast and Famine, four Misstep, one Crucible. Um, lands, Flooded Strand, Mystery Rain Forest, Tundra, Volcanic Island, Wasteland, Mutavault, Island Plains, and a single Riptide Laboratory. Sideboard is Elspeth Knight Errant, Crucible Worlds, Timely Reinforcements, Wrath Path, Pyroblast, Reb, Gite, Manriki Gusari, Surgical Extraction, and Force of Will. So uh, hopefully... That uh, helps answer your question. If you have any more questions, Drew, feel free to send them our, our way, and uh, I'll make sure to respond to you. We got a comment from uh, Jarvis Yu who says that uh, uh, he knows Kurt Spice and uh, apparently also works with Tim Skowski on uh, a little bit, possibly on this deck, um, and says that uh, more than likely John would board out the the standstill, um, and then probably not board in the relic, which don't. Think you said it at all? No, I, I, yeah. I mean I mentioned it as a, a card that's there. I don't think you should board it in. Though. No, He's the one who wants lands see. in his graveyard. Yeah, and though Kurt only has access to a single crucible, the only thing is John doesn't know exactly what's going on with Kurt's deck. He doesn't yeah. know if maybe he's on a more land still plan because game one he's got locked out by crucible and wasteland. Yeah, um, exactly. Now we did see the Riptide Laboratory, which is a little bit of a giveaway. Um, it shows he's, he definitely has clicks and and probably sprites. Probably sprites, yeah. Um, Likely more at standstill. That certainly could happen. The players are going to take forever to play Drago anyway, so mm -hmm. that's certainly something I could see. Okay, so uh, looks like we are on to game two. Uh, yep, John leads with Tundra. Kurt leads with Misty Rainforest. Misty Rainforest, and then John has a uh, slightly better foil version of Misty <laughs> Rainforest. Might be foreign, too. I'm not sure. Yeah, game one we saw a very rare, quick matchup. This game is going to be a lot of Drago, I think. Uh... Are right, there's Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, yep, Stoneforge Mystic comes down. Ubiquitous two drop, a little scary. John Winters does have a force in his hand if he wants to use it. It's like he goes for Spell Snare. Spell Snare is it. And Kurt lets it resolve, no mental misstep. Misstep goes down. Interesting about Spell Snare, I mean, it can get missteps, so you can get these weird counter wars, but uh, none there. And John just, or sorry, Kurt just plays Immutable, and John Winters has a Brainstorm end step. Not sure if I like that end step Brainstorm or not, depends on if he's digging for lands. I can't quite tell it's in his hand. It's all foil, so it's hard to see. That's that's one of the things that we are definitely trying to fix, is the uh, the, the viewability of, of the match, as uh, under the lights, the foils can get quite ridiculous and very, very difficult to see. 
And somehow it seems like we're always featuring the players with all foil decks. Yeah, like, you yeah. know, Ed, the Edgar Flores is of the world. Ed, Edgar Flores and uh, people like uh, Elix Cease, things oh, sure. like that. Yeah, legacy players do love their foils. So John uh, cracks his Missy. And... Let's see, down comes Island off uh, the Misty Rainforest. And once again, really no idea what's in John's hand. All I know is he has a Force of Will because it's a non-foil card and I can recognize it. <laughs> Uh, I believe I saw a, uh, let's see, yeah, I think I saw a Foil Elspeth there as one of the cards that he actually saw from the, the Brainstorm. Okay. Uh, Probably put that back and shuffled it away with the, the fetch land there. All right, well, there's a Caracas from John Winters, and step a billion click from Kurt Spice. Now, Caracas can bounce a billion click, <laughs> but usually that's not the one you want to do that on. Uh, counterspell from John Winters will try and keep that at bay, and it does. Click heads to the graveyard. Uh, Chris Spice, I, he's got another Stoneforge Mystic in his hand. A couple more fetch lines. Cracks Flooded Strand. Not really related to the game, but someone did ask if we tried polarizing filters for the glare, and we actually do have one on the overhead cam. Uh, and it's definitely cut down on it a little bit, but it's really just more of a placement of, you know, the, the actual table under the lighting, because each, each area is different, so our lighting's always different. Looks right. like uh, an Elspeth comes down. And John just forces that pretty quickly, yeah, removing pretty quickly, misstep, yeah. not totally sure. Yeah, I mean, even at the... Uh, yeah, it looks like a misstep there. Even at, in the top, it's a Pro Tours, they have insane equipment and yeah. cameras moving around and people, you, you know, holding it all. You, you, there's still reflection from the foils. It's just it's, so hard it, to it deal just with. It always happens, and the the, the foils are always worse. Uh, the the glare that we see a little bit on uh, Kurt's cards here is, is mostly from the, the overhead lights, and that that we can't really control in, in the venues that we go to. But we are working on a way to do that. We don't really want to play magic in the dark, you know. And so let's see, so John's board got two Tundras, Island, Caracas, versus uh, two Tundras, Mutavolt, Island, on Kurt Spice's side. There's a Flooded Strand for John Winters. Caps for, His there's another Elspeth, uh, yeah. Elspeth, this time on John Winters' side, yeah. Yeah. The foil Elspeth I was talking about earlier is his uh, one of in his list. And pretty good here, resolves and could easily start to take over this game. Mutavolt crunches into Elspeth. Runs in at Elspeth. John just lets it hit the uh, Planeswalker. So it's alright, happens. Plays another Mutavolt, and then a Stoneforge Mystic. Mystic's gonna resolve. Alright, so that'll give Kurt something to do, but the life total isn't as the life total isn't as relevant to Kurt. Batter skull. It's batter skull, but the life total's not super relevant, so. John doesn't mind chump blocking with to uh, that soldier token over and over if he needs to, while Elspeth, you know, continually just buys him time. Thank you, Judge, by the way. <laughs> Bringing that soldier token. Back. Don't need the back of a card. The front no. of the card is uh, where it's at. Definitely another thing that we've been trying to improve is uh, getting the, the feature match table, the actual tokens to represent. Because <laughs> uh, notice, you know, people using dice and everything like that under under the camera here, and just can't really keep track of it when you got multiple uh, tokens and things like that. And Elspeth goes plus one, mm -hmm. makes gets another, another soldier from the judge, soldier. keeps soldiering on, and will pass the turn. I imagine he's going to keep those two soldiers to potentially block a Mutavolt if it comes his way. And uh, basically dissuade the uh, mini creature type land from attacking. Plays Flooded Strand, cracks Flooded Strand. Volcanic Island from Crit Spice. And pretty quick, quick to crack that. What if he was waiting for a uh, red source? 
All right, Kurt sends both meter vaults at Elspeth, and I imagine two of them are going to block one of the meter vaults. Looks like it's what's happening. Yeah. Kills off that meter vault, and Elspeth goes down to two counters. Two counters. Two loyalty. Surgical extraction. Oh, wow. Device. Did not expect that one. But I guess you can surgical extract your wastelands. Um, numerous things. Uh, so what did he target there? Force? Uh, targeted Force of Will, apparently. Named Force, Force of Will. Of, named Force of Will. A surgical extraction. Huh. Uh, get this all out. Now, I, I don't know if Force is really the card that Kurt should be worried about there. But uh, I guess we just wanted to see what John had going on. Looks like John did leave in those standstills. What do you think the thing to name there would have been? Well, it depends on what's in John's graveyard. It's possible there just weren't any good targets. Normally, I would consider waiting until, like, for example, Wasteland is in the graveyard. Yeah, that makes sense. Or, you know, something like that accord. But I think it's mostly just been uh, Force, Counterspell, a few fetch lands. Yeah, not really a lot of good options. No. I don't know. I always feel like Surgical Extraction is a pretty underperforming card. It's one of those that really does seem a lot more powerful than it turns out to be in a lot of matches. And John Winters draws. I think. So there's the Wasteland, too. Yep, there's the Wasteland. And that's what Kurt would really want a Surgical Extraction. Takes Elspeth up and gets Soldier Token again. Yep, and that Wasteland's going to be great because it can knock off that Muta Vault from Kurt Spice, mm -hmm. meaning that can't come in anymore. Kurt will have a Batter Skull, but the Soldier can deal with that indefinitely. Well, not indefinitely, but <laughs> re repeatedly definitely. <laughs> Alright, yep, and he comes Batter Skull. Mm -hmm. Files down the Batter Skull with the uh, Mystic there. <laughs> Gets a Blastoise. He's got his, got his, got his own uh, Blastoise token there. And knocks off the Beautiful. It was the bluest black germ I've seen. <laughs> Seriously. All right, John Shump blocks. Takes Elspeth back down to two loyalty counters. Kurt plays the Beauty Vault. So Kurt attacked with a Batter Skull and Stone Forge Mystic. The Soldier blocked the Germ Token, and so Elspeth took, took one. So basically Elspeth is in a state of stasis now, except for the fact that uh, Kurt played that Beauty Vault. Ooh, Jace, Jace the Mind Sculptor. The mind sculptor. No, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, you you yeah. can either Fate Seal or Brainstorm. Mm. At this point, it looks like you may want to Brainstorm. I mean, you could unsummon the Germ Token and just to get Elspeth up an extra turn, but I think Brainstorm has got to be more valuable. Yeah. Okay, so it ticks up Elspeth again, get another Soldier Token. I like Brainstorm here quite a bit. Yeah. Let's see if that's what he goes for. Even as the Flooded Strand in play to shuffle stuff away yeah, too. Yeah, he's he got another, another in hand. To potentially do it again in the future. Oh, it does look like he counsels so the Germ Token. He does unsummon. Yeah. Okay. Now, th this means Kurt's play is probably past the, past the turn. And just going to, or he's going to return Batter Skull here, untap, pass the turn, put it back in. Yeah. Or probably tap with Muta Vault, then put it back in. All right, yeah, returns yeah, Batter Skull. Keeps Muta Vault. Oh, there's a Brainstorm. Brainstorm. Okay. Looks like Stoneforge. I think that might have been two Stoneforge Mystics. And then, was that a Jace? If that was Jace, that's yeah, very good for it's, Kurt. It's what, what it looks like. It was a Jace. Yep, that is definitely a Jace. Yep, and that's what Kurt Spice wants, a Jace to trade off with John. Like Jace. putting back one of those Stone Forges, and I didn't see the second one at all. Well, he'll probably end up drawing one of them. Mm. Pick those both up, so... It's 
still thinking about his brainstorm. All right, puts them back definitively. And they'll probably see a Jace here trade off. All right, swings in. Swings with Stoneforge. Doesn't swing with Mutavolt. Seems like a pretty clear indicator to be the yeah. Jace. Because otherwise he'd be, you know, using batter skull, so. Yeah. What other thing would he have for Expedelia he's, click, maybe? But. He's not uh, using the stone forge to put the batter skull back into play again. End of his turn or anything like that. Yeah, I guess he could be. John could think he's on Vendillion click yeah. as well. Certainly possible. All right, so he just lets uh, Elspeth take it, and Jace is trade up. Pass it back to John Winters. John's still uh, the aggressor here. He's going to make another Elspeth token. And by aggressor, I mean he just kind of has the tempo edge right now. He can just keep making tokens, and he can keep presenting threats, and Kurt has to continually do things to keep them in check. Yep. It's kind of strange to say that for the Blue White Land still deck. Couldn't quite tell what Kurt drew there, but he put it back with the brainstorm, whatever it was. Taps two. Another stone forge. Stone forge. I'll shuffle uh, the library. He's got sort of decent famine left to get. I doubt he boarded in uh, GTA or Ben Rinky, sorry. Maybe Ben Rinky. Yeah, it's sword, it looks like. Yep, gets the sword. It's possible Kurt has a dead Benrique Gusari in his deck based on how little he saw of John Winter's deck, but definitely uh, not a G10. And the sword is going to be way better here anyway, so he does get the sword if he's the famine. And John taps three, and here comes Crucible. Crucible. Now that's a big yeah. deal. Neither deck really has a good answer I'm looking to see what he can do. It's that Wasteland again. Yeah, neither deck has a really good answer, and yeah, there's Wasteland back. I'm sure Kurt is kind of wishing he had saved his uh, Surgical Extractions, Surgical Extraction for that Wasteland. That really does seem like a card that you're going to be very timely on, and this is the time to play it. <laughs> Gets another blue Batter Skull Germ token. Alright, so it wastes the mutable. Blastoise is back, but John Winter is uh takes a little out on him by wastelanding him. And just going to continually whittle his mana base down. There's a sort of feasting famine. Got equipped to Stone Forge Mystic. Swings in. And I'll probably see both those shut blocks here. One on uh swings in with Stone Forge Mystic equipped with sword, as well as the germ token with batter skull. I don't imagine they're both going to be blocked. Yep. Yep. One to one. Chomp and chomp. And Kurt goes up. And then he draws a card. Taps one. Brainstorm. Brainstorm. Yep. Brainstorm. John Winters. Mistress Factory. Blue card. Blue card. I'm also very, definitely very jealous of those uh, four brainstorms. Yeah, yeah, those are pretty. So, so nice. Are those... Yeah, those are original masks foil brainstorms, yep. right? Because yep. the other the FNM ones have the new card face and the FNM Yeah, logo. they have the FNM logo underneath it. Those are actually gorgeous. Yeah. Alright, so John plays his Mistress Factory. Makes another soldier. Continues to soldier on his own. One of our altruists actually took the, uh, the masks version of Brainstorm, uh, Hannah Murray and extended the art for it all the way around, and those ones look gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Those are, those, that's definitely what I would have won. Our altars do great work. Like, Clug, Eric Clug, yeah. too. Eric Clug's been here all weekend, and he actually just posted a couple things he did this weekend on his website. Um, I think one was an Angel of Despair, and another was uh, making a full art Chase the Mind sculpture. Whew. Yeah. That's a test. Yeah, you don't want to mess up that, that one. And then he, uh, he uh, blinked out entirely the art and text box for it text box for an Elish Norn and put a uh, My Little Pony with the <laughs> Obey underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. Uh, great work. It uh, looks like John Winters cracks up with fetches 
and plays a Vendillion Click in mid combat as Kurt is attacking. Just to get a little bit of information and maybe deal with a problematic card. I think my favorite Elishdorn is the one. I don't remember who did it. Um, Matt Johnson, I know, had one. He's from the UK, and he had one in Philadelphia last week. But uh, he did an Elishdorn all in Phyrexian, like the one that they previewed originally. Yeah, I did. That, see that. is hard to do. That's really, it's really cool. impressive. Um, Looks very Hannah, cool. the one who altered the brainstorm, also actually took. Uh, someone requested she change a force of will and blank the text and do uh, make it all Japanese. <laughs> so it's a fully Japanese force of will. That's incredible. Yeah. Very these, cool. These altars are really good. So looks like John is blocking Batter Skull with V click and then bouncing it with Caracas and then also blocking the Stone Forge with. Uh, soldier token. Yep, so nothing happens except for Videli Click ends up back in John Winner's hand. And John plays his third Stone Forge, it looks yeah. like. Yeah, Kurt lays uh, another Stone Forge, and I don't think he searches. Or John goes for Spell Snare here. I think he's just Spell Snare. The board state is getting a little yep. complicated. Yep. But that Wasteland, perpetual Wasteland from John Winner's, will eventually bottleneck Kurt's mana, and then I think John could pull ahead. Got, he's got to play for like five turns for now, but when he gets to that point, he'll be uh, he'll be ahead. Let's um, see. No, I'm getting. Mistress Factory picks up Elspeth again to get another soldier token. So Elspeth sitting on three, five counters. Is that correct? Five. Uh, looks like five. Yeah, it's. Looks like a five to me. Five counters, two soldiers, Crucible Worlds, several lands, including Caracas and Mistress Factory. And there is Vanilla Click again. Yep. And that click is just going to be a big problem for Kurt Ooh. Spice. See Spell Stutter Sprite. Spell Stutter Sprite. Every turn it can come down with that Caracas. Says. Caracas. Oh, he's debating on it, actually. It looked like he said it was okay at first, and then he asked to see it again. Okay, it looks like he says it's okay. Elspeth is on five, as we got. And the Vidalian click does the same kind of deal, blocks the batter skull. It's gonna have the Caracas for it. Um, lighting stuff up in front of that Stoneforge Mystic. Yep, puts a soldier token in front of the Stoneforge. So same thing as last turn. Click will come back. Soldier cho soldier token gets eaten by the sorted Stoneforge. Yep. Ah yes, Landstool. Landstool versus fairies. <laughs> Very it's, incremental it's the, advantage. Didn't we just do this last turn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so true. And there's spell stutter sprite for a crit spice. So just just making the one one for value. Yeah. Well, he's got to get the sword. Giving her the sword. John uh, plays V click, targets himself, puts uh, his card on the bottom, and picks something up a new one. Just peeked at it a little too quickly, didn't show the camera, so. Uh, he's got Stancil and Scalding Tarn. Yeah, it looks like he got Stancil off the deep quick and then not. Uh, yep, sounds right to me. Scalding Tarn there. Stancil, not good for John Winters here. He wants to continually be Karakas. Yeah. So. Gets back to Wasteland. And I imagine he'll waste away one of Chris Lands here. Waste yep. volcanic island. Uh. All right. So Kurt Spice attacks with spell starter spread with sword and batter skill. So what's Kurt hoping to get uh, to get himself out of this? Probably just his own crucible. <laughs> would uh, be really nice for him. I his guess. own crucible would work out decently. Yes. Otherwise, I think John has inevitability here. Yeah. His own Medellin click could be uh, yeah, pretty good. That would be pretty big. Like his click would make sure John could use his click effectively. So that's pretty good. Josh draws his card for the turn. Plays a brainstorm. Sees shackles. That's huge. Ooh, yeah. is that, that's that shackles dust. Pull something else, and 
<coughs> Both yeah. those cards are big, big deal. Uh, Dust Bowl can help accelerate the waste landing, and Shackles will absolutely dominate this game. I mean, John was in a good position before, and that Shackles will move it into a great position. And there's the Shackles. Yeah. And he just, Kurt just scoops it up. All right, Kurt also. Very wise. Man, I'm so glad we're playing with, against two players, or watching two players, who both know how this matchup goes. Because so many players would just continue to play that out. They would just grind it. And they'd know that there's one game left. These games could take half an hour, 40 minutes each. And we get, there's not that much time left, and they want to be able to. They want to be able to make sure they finish their match. So back to the sideboard it is. So yeah. Now that uh, John has seen a bit more of uh, Kurt stack. Yeah, I mean, it changes anything. Well, I don't know how much John's gonna change necessarily. Uh, if you boarded it in your relics on accident, those won't be in there anymore. No. Kurt will probably not have Mad Ricky Gusari if he accidentally brought that in because he thought his opponent was playing. There are nine minutes left in the round, mm. so this is this match is not likely to finish. So it was probably pretty. Wise of Kurt to at least scoop that up and not uh, well, grind it. Well, yeah. Wise or un unwise. Oh, possibly unwise. He could, he have, he could have gotten a 1 0 yeah, victory he potentially. Possibly could have gotten a 1 0. Although, I think the way that game was going, John Winters, Winters would have probably eventually won with very, slightly, like, you know, a couple minutes left. Yeah. Uh, he starts shackling, shackling his opponent's guys and probably have the match from there. Also, both neither player really wants a, a draw here, though, so. I don't know. I could I could see reasons for Kurt to continue to play that out. But I think he made the right choice in conceding when he did. And the players have nine minutes to resolve their match. Let's see. Yeah, that one shackles was huge for John Winters. The the blue white Lancel deck can play this weird game where it has like a bunch of different one ofs that are uh, you know good going long, very inevitability cards, and eventually you just find one of those one ofs and you end up taking the game. Yeah. And that's what and happened he, there, he, he found, found his he, one shackles. Yeah, he, he found his shackles, but before that he was also, he had his one of Elspeth that helped <laughs> him get to that grind to that point of uh, just basically pushing ahead with that, that shackles. And, and the one of Caracas too. Yeah, the one of Caracas, and found all, one of his, his crucibles, and obviously he probably brought in the second one from the sideboard, but... Yeah, a lot of, lot of one-ofs that definitely helped him get to that point of just being able to have inevitability on him. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, this is a... For, for those watching at home, this match is either probably extremely interesting to you or it's about <laughs> making you want to gnaw your arm off. <laughs> one of the two. I find matches like this very interesting because there's these tiny little intricacies. They can change it significantly. You know, you get these big counter battles. You all play for these fundamental turns. Some people don't quite find that as, as interesting, and they'll, like I said, want to gnaw their arm off. I remember watching a commentary, and it was... Well, looks like they might have started. Uh, yeah, they have their openers. Yep. Oh, yep. So they're off to the races. Kurt's got to turn one flooded strands. Which looks like they're trying to go as quickly as they can. Yeah. Uh, looks like they probably both kept their seven. Yeah, both hands seem pretty keepable. I see, John, I see John's got plenty of lands in it, which is what you want in this match. You just want to yeah. play land every turn. I remember watching like Adrian Sullivan and Jake Van Luden covering up mirror like this and you know it was just not it, it was cl it was clear that it was just a long grind match and everyone was getting a little tired Kurt gets a uh, Stoneforge Mystic comes down and resolves and he goes to get sword with that yeah sword into Kurt's hand and now that is a complete breaker if you want to win, win this match quickly that's a good way to do it turn two mystic followed by sword you can pick apart John's hand potentially and uh, let's see John's hand looks like several lands including a mistress factory there's a misty rainforest and Kurt's likely to just play a land and probably pass planning to put in the Sword of Feast and Famine in John's winner's end step. Or, <laughs> or Wasteland, wasteland away a Tundra. Away. <laughs> Wasteland's John's Tundra. And it looks like uh, Kurt actually has Batterskull in hand. 
Yep, he vials down Batter Skull. Alright, so he goes for Batter Skull over Feast of Famine. So board position is, it's just so ridiculous, you know, that batter skull stone forge combination. We're like, land, 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 squire, 4-4 four, four, lifelink vigilance that can't ever die, yeah. you know? Uh, I believe I saw somebody on uh, Twitter commented a while ago, that, like everyone was talking about uh, Stoneforge being a squire and said, uh, Stoneforge is the best squire because it gets your sword for you. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> It's a squire that actually does what a squire is supposed to do, which is to get you your weapons. And that's obviously something that's been discussed ad nauseum by even yourself and Kibler today. Uh, uh, just like how, you know, you've got the same thing in Legacy as you did in Standard when when Jace and Stoneforge and all those were legal. Yeah, it's crazy how powerful it is. So there's Fidelian Click. From John Winters, seeing Kurt's hand of Force Misstep, Sword of Peace and Famine, Elspeth J. Stoneforge, oh, wow. but no more lands. Wow. Very powerful hand, but do you want to give him? You want to risk giving him more lands? What do you want to do here? You, do, you don't want him to get to Elspeth and Jace, that's for sure. And John does have a wasteland in hand, but can't use it currently. So. And I, I, it's really interesting to know, you can take the sword, okay, yeah. it does just take the, that's, take that's the sword. That's probably my choice. But with Mystic also in Kurt's hand, you can just fetch that sword up again. That is very true. Um, and, I don't know, the, more, the fewer lands he has, the, which he had zero, the more you can get ahead. I might have just let him keep it, but I think there's definitely a big decision you can make there either way. Or you take one of the Planeswalkers, that's a legit choice too, potentially. Yeah. I think it, I think probably the best choice would have been just to let him keep it with not seeing a third land there. Uh, there's a Stoneforge Mystic for Kurt Spice, which will probably go find the Feast and Famine that was just shipped away. And back to John Winters. John Winters sitting at just 11 life after from that batter skull. He's certainly on the defensive here. He's got to find a way to deal with that 4-4 lifelinker and fast. Yeah, Kurt is definitely on his way to uh, possibly taking advantage of that that nine-minute timeline time that they had left. Right, and he was the one that conceded too. So if mm -hmm. he wins, you know that'll really show that he knew when to pack him in. There's a crucible from John Winter, so that's great with uh, you know with his graveyard, but it's not going to help against a 4-4. He can't no. infinitely block it with Mistress Factory, but not exactly the way you want to get ahead into control, beer. Well, and, then and there's a force from force Kurt. Pitching uh, missed up there. And there's so still calling it. And I think the the crucible would have been pretty good pick for John as well, just because of the fact that. Uh, he does have the Wasteland in hand, so any non-basic that Kurt plays from now on, he can just pretty much keep him off. His land count, and he's got you know, Jace and Elspeth and all the known cards were... John Let's see. Alright, tax with Batter Skull and the two, uh, one, two Squires. Two Squires, yeah. See how John Winter chooses the block. Probably taking the four from the Batter Skull, we'll drop the seven. The question is, does he want to trade a click for a Stoneforge at all? It, probably not, but if he has no one yet, he just takes it yeah, all. No. Drops the five life. And... Plays with Jace the Mind Sculptor, looking at John's top card. Just puts it on the bottom. Oh. Kurt Spice in a really good position right here. We'll see if it holds. So... Right now, I think the life totals are John 5 and Kurt 30. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 5 to 30 is uh, quite the distance to overcome. So John's got a lot of ground to cover, and 
very with, very short time. They probably have a bit of an extension. Yeah, it's true. They probably with but, uh, you know getting set up in the feature match area. Yeah. And actually, remember there one of the players took a bathroom break at the beginning. Oh, too, that so is they true. Had a little yeah. bit more time. Yep. So, Kurt was probably uh, especially wise to concede that last game. Let's see what happens. Four, and here comes Elspeth. All right, now Elspeth, that air from Josh Winters, or John Winters will help. So it looks like the clock is actually at about 15 seconds right now. All right, so the clock at 15 seconds. These players have, I want to say about probably seven extra minutes, somewhere in there. I'd say somewhere between five, five and, and seven. seven minutes. Probably, yeah. probably a good estimate. There's a wasteland from John Winters. That might be enough time for uh, Kurt to figure something out there. Let's see. All right, passes back. John Winters passes back the board if you can exactly identify everything. John Winters has several lands, including Wasteland and Colonnade Factory, a Soldier Token generated from his Elspeth, and a Vidalion Click. Kurt Spice has four lands, including a Riptide Laboratory, two Stoneforge Mystics, a Jace the Mind Sculptor, and a Blastoise, a.k.a. Germ Token, uh, wearing a Batter Skull. The Jace is at one now from... The... All right, and Kurt... Vials in the Sword of Feast and Fam and equips it to Stoneforge Mystic. Definitely tell from his movements he's trying to end this as quick as possible. Yeah, he knows that time is of the essence. Alright, so he's going to block the Sword of Feast and Famine guy. You think uh, John's just playing for the draw right now then? Yeah, they have a seven minute extension, so I mean they're okay. playing. I mean, play, I mean, he might be playing for the draw, but I don't think that's a draw he's going to be able to get. No. We still have, you know, five minutes left, and John Winters is <laughs> not in a... Not, not in a good position. Not in a good position at all. No. Plays another land. Just an island. An unhinged foil island. But an island, nonetheless. Cards, unlike Planeswalker points, do not have multipliers based on how awesome they are. They should. Uh, I think that was something that you guys discussed earlier uh, yesterday. Uh, which, uh, how many Planeswalkers points does Jace have? <laughs> Just because he appears so much in all these events. Right, right. Kind of like, what is Bai's rating, you yeah. know? That guy's lost a ton of matches. And, uh, I brought up the fact that uh, if, if, you know, Jace has that many, how many does Basic Island have? <laughs> <laughs> Basic Island, probably the highest rated on Planeswalker Hard, points. Yeah. It's, it's zero, above, above Olivia Ruel. So, looks like John made a token and... Alright, so John Winter's board, uh, he's got a Vendellian click there, mm -hmm. as well as a Soldier token. It says... It says Jace, minus one your Vendellian click. Swing in with everything. So, can you deal the blast point of damage? Is that it? That's it! And John... Chris Bice takes it. Two to one. Congratulations to Kurt Spice. Um, six and one. Heading six in to uh, yep. two rounds left. Okay. Hey everybody, back in the booth. I'm Gavin Bray here with Jeremy Noah. We just saw a long and grindy matchup between two blue-white decks. And uh, yeah, it's interesting to watch. Not too much time uh, left. In fact, they've called 